I've seen some older guys make these types of videos and I think they are very good. But if you're a younger guy, a teenager perhaps, then maybe you'll relate more to somebody of my age. I am now 26. I can tell you a lot will change from 16 to 26. I can't even imagine really what's going to change between 26 and 36. But in today's video, I want to share with you some practical advice. I'll tell you the exact mistakes I made as a late teenager and also some of the moves that I'm very happy I made. My first piece of advice to a younger man is to embrace your inner discipline. I wish that when I was a late teenager, I'd used my time more productively. See, when I was in my early teens and even 11 or 12, I definitely had OCD. And obviously there was a very dark side to that, but there was also a flip side where I found it very easy to be disciplined and regimented and structured. And that's come back to me in later life without some of the bad things. But as a late teenager, I definitely lost hold of that because I actually didn't realize that being disciplined, being structured was a healthy habit. That wasn't a negative part of being OCD. I didn't see anyone around me following a schedule. I didn't hear people talking about being disciplined. Now with the kind of content that's on the internet, hopefully you're hearing different kind of messages, but I wish that I'd had a schedule so I could have used my time more productively. I think I could have achieved better academically. I know I could have put more time into my musicianship, playing the guitar. And I wish I'd also just started exercising properly and developed a good social circle, but more on that later. Now, this video isn't for me to pass the blame of my mistakes onto other people, but I know for a fact the main reason I wasn't disciplined as a late teenager, it wasn't me, it was because of this. The number one thing by far that held me back as a young man was a very bad relationship or situationship, you might call it these days, in which there was a very unhealthy power dynamic. And the reason there was an unhealthy power dynamic is because she was over 20 years older than me. Now, some of you watching this might think, oh, good on you, how, and think it's funny. And I suppose I thought that for a little bit of time too. If it had been maybe a one night thing, maybe a few weeks kind of fling, a Mrs. Robinson type of situation, maybe that would have been funny, but it actually went on from when I was 15 and she was 37, right until my 20th birthday when I called things off. And I'm very, very glad that I cut contact with her on my 20th birthday. I decided I was not going to bring this into my 20s. I would say there have been three great decisions I've made in my life. One of them was moving to the US, the other one was starting this YouTube channel and the first one really would definitely be leaving this woman. Obviously this situation was borderline illegal. It would definitely be illegal in some countries, but in case you're unsure whether your relationship is healthy or unhealthy, here's a way that I would like to think about it. Is this relationship, this person in your life, a net positive? or a net negative. And you can love somebody and enjoy their company at times, but they are still a net negative in your life. Because yes, I may have had feelings for this woman, I might have enjoyed her company when things were good, and I felt a great level of chemistry for her. I think really I was under some kind of spell. But the real problem was she was just extremely controlling and extremely emotionally volatile. And I believe the controlling aspect of that relationship and the age gap went very much hand in hand. She was very clearly trying to shape me into a man that I didn't want to be. And I knew that to be my own person, I had to walk away from that situation. So if you are in a bad, toxic relationship, I don't know if a single YouTube video is going to give you the courage to leave that person but I hope that maybe it might push you in that direction and it might have you thinking a bit more about your current relationship, especially as a young man. Perhaps you're about to leave for college, for university, and you're thinking, do I stay in this relationship? Do I go to the same college as her so we can be together? Or do I go out and do my own thing? I'm not telling you to do either one. I'm saying that if you want to be with this person and you want to commit to them at a very young age, 
you really have to be sure that it is a good relationship for you. I think I need to cut my nails. I'm realizing I didn't do it yesterday. It, always cut your nails at least once a week, gentlemen. That's my main piece of advice for young men. I'm not really drinking very much coffee lately. I'm enjoying starting the day with an Earl Grey, Twining's Earl Grey. Now, in Britain, we drink Earl Grey with milk and maybe sugar. I'm just drinking it black, but fairly weak. So that's how I'm enjoying it right now. I'm not drinking very much milk because I'm really trying to improve. You might have noticed in my videos, my voice is very nasal and I really dislike that. I have sinus problems. I have a deviated septum. I've done one surgery. The next surgery from that would be like a full on nose job. So I would have a bandage on my nose for weeks, which would obviously put me out of action. So I'm trying to avoid that by just eliminating dairy, eliminating things that would particularly give people sinus issues. So we'll see how that goes. Hopefully you'll notice an improvement over the coming weeks. But it's difficult because I, I really love cheese. It, I really love cheese. So this video isn't just about the mistakes that I've made. I also want to acknowledge some moves that were actually a really good idea and that might be a good idea for you as a young man. A really important piece of advice that I would encourage most of you to take is to leave your hometown. As a young man, I was absolutely fixated on getting to London and university was my ticket to that city. I actually had this irrational fear of failing my A-levels and having to repeat a year of college in Swansea. Even though I was an A student, there was no way I was gonna possibly fail my A-levels. I was just so obsessed with getting to London, with getting to university, that I had this irrational fear in the back of my mind. And I suppose that served as a form of motivation for me. So why should a young man go to a big city? After all, they are busy, they're expensive, they're sometimes a little dangerous, they're dirty. What is the deal there? Well, the people you will meet, the experiences you will have, and the standards of achievement that you will encounter will completely change your perceptions of both what is normal and what is possible. If you stay in a small town, it's going to be very hard not to have a small mind. So even if you have a family in your hometown whom you love very much, you know, just go away for five, 10 years, have your Dick Whittington type of adventure, go back and visit your family fairly frequently, but go to a big city, forge your own path, make your own adventures in life. This is the time when you need to be your own man. You need to go somewhere where you are one among millions and find some kind of way to stand out amongst that crowd. Now, what's a good city for an 18 year old or a 19 year old is generally not the type of city where you need a car. But personally, I really regret not learning to drive at a younger age. It wasn't until I became an adult after I graduated. And I really do think that you actually become an adult after you graduate college when you're about 21, 22, not when you're 18, because when you're 18 and you're in college, you're still in this kind of bubble. It's almost like a boarding school. Yes, you're an adult in the legal sense, but you're not really out there having to make your own way in the world. So it was really after I graduated university that I saw the value in driving. I saw that I could go for weekends away with my girlfriend. As a musician, I could drive to different cities to perform gigs. And obviously there were a lot of work opportunities that came if I could drive. So I eventually passed my test age 22, second time, which in the UK is not too bad, but it was way harder doing it a few years after I could have done it at 17 than if I'd just gone and done it straight away because I had lessons on and off over a period of a few years. I then actually learned to drive in London, which was probably the hardest and the worst place to learn to drive. And overall, it just took a lot more time and a lot more money to learn to drive than if I just started when I was 17 and hit that goal right away. And I think driving, owning a car is a great exercise for a young man because obviously it's great freedom, but there's also a great responsibility with being a driver. And I think that can teach you some very important, very serious lessons. The fifth lesson I would teach a younger man is that money matters. Online content has changed so much in the last 10 years that maybe you don't need to hear this message, but I know as a teenager, money and the idea of making a lot of money 
really wasn't important to me. I grew up in a relatively comfortable family. I knew that the average salary was around 35, thousand pounds. I didn't see too many people around me struggling. So I don't think I had some kind of burning motivation to be successful financially. But the truth is average is not comfortable. Average is not doing okay. The average person is really struggling and the average person stresses about money. It causes the average married couple a lot of arguments and grief. And going back to that living in a big city thing, it was really when I lived in London for a few years that it started to click for me how important money could be and also how enjoyable it could be. I used to walk around New Bond Street and I'd look at all these stores, all these supercars parked up and I'd think, what do these people have that I don't? Obviously, yes, they literally have money that I don't, but in terms of the attributes that got them that money, are they more intelligent than me? Are they more hardworking than me? And I thought actually, the answer is no. And I feel like I should be able to get those things just as they have. Now, I'm not actually a very materialistic person. If I had that level of money, New Bond Street probably isn't the way I would spend it. But to have the ability to have that foundation, to be able to provide for myself and my future family, that became the motivation of money for me. And I've always been quite an ambitious person in one sense of the word. And the ambition that I had, let's say for achievement, also turned into an ambition for financial achievement. The average person is struggling a lot working a nine to five job. The average university graduate is not having a great time, but in the online world where my career exists, we have a great level of opportunity and I love what I do. The way I like to look at it is the more I serve people, the more I provide something that is valuable, that enriches their lives, the more likely they are to reward me with a token of appreciation with the president's face on it. From a very young age, I've always felt like an individual. I've always thought differently from most people. And at some times in my life, I've even looked very different. And I've been very proud to be my own person. I've never wanted to be part of the flock. I've always preferred my own way of thinking, my own way of doing things. But as a younger man, I think I confused the advantages of being an individual with the disadvantages of being isolated. Throughout my teenage years, I only ever had one or two very close friends and I never had a big group of people to hang out with. I, I simply wasn't a particularly social person. What I wish I'd realized is just because you're a bit different, just because you're an individual, doesn't mean you can't exist within a group. It doesn't mean you can't join the sports team. It doesn't mean you can't be involved in your community and band together a group of friends whom you might not necessarily have everything in common with, but it's your differences that make it interesting. What is different about you, what makes you special and unique is how you add value to that group. Because if you were just like everybody else around, then having you in that group wouldn't make any difference. You can even think of yourself like this rare ingredient, this rare spice, and on its own, the spice is pretty useless, but you add it to a recipe, and that's when it begins to shine, and that's when it makes the whole dish something interesting and valuable. And if you worry about being judged by a group because you're a little bit different, then use your involvement in that group as your opportunity to prove their first impressions wrong. So if I could actually go back in time and tell my 16 year old self these things, give him this advice, would I? Probably not. Partially due to the butterfly effect, but also because I think there's a lot of value in figuring things out for yourself. And as a young man, my final piece of advice, ironically, is to not worry too much about advice. Don't spend hours searching for advice, looking for the answers on the internet, because nobody has ever been you in this particular set of circumstances. I'm very grateful that I've met some people who have become very powerful, very generous mentors for me. People that I only could have dreamt I would have met. But when people ask me about what was it like to meet them, they always want to know what piece of advice did he give you? What did he tell you? What was the one thing he said that changed everything for me? And there really is no one thing. And in fact, I don't even spend my time with my mentor figures 
asking for advice. I prefer more to just learn more about them share ideas and learn through observing. It's great to have role models, it's great to take an interest and learn from other people, but the way you're going to learn the most is actually by doing, maybe by making some of the very same mistakes that I made, despite just hearing me telling you not to make them. As I continue on my journey, a recurring thought that I have is, the more I learn, the more I realize how much I still don't know. Let me know in the comments if you're enjoying this style of video. I'm experimenting a little bit with my format right now just to keep things interesting and engaging both for you and for me. So I look forward to hearing from you in the comments and I thank you very much for watching.